Hi there, it's Chris Barrow again. Uh, this is the third week um, that I am at the British Road Transport Museum in Coventry and I'm delighted this week that I've got somebody with me for this uh, video blog and this is Carol Rees uh, who is the dental head for NHS Coventry. Uh, Carol and I have known each other for about eight years or so and uh, it's just great to have her here talking about the, the work that we've been doing uh, with the Coventry PCT uh, practices. So Carol, first thing I'd like to do for the benefit of the per people who are watching this, could you just explain to me exactly what it is you do for a living? Yeah, sure. I work for NHS Coventry's primary care contracting manager. Um, we've got 36 independent contract holders. Um, I'm responsible for managing the um, delivery of the contracts um, from patient point of view, from contractual point of view, and the safety element of it as well. Okay, so um, what I heard there is that you're responsible, did I hear 30 36 practices correct, uh, yeah. that are based in the Coventry PCT area. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you contacted me about a year ago. Yeah. And uh, we had an initial conversation about the provision of some uh, patient journey and customer service training for the 36 NHS practices in the PCT area. Carol, what was the uh, background? What happened? that made you pick up the phone and ring Chris Barrow, what was okay. going on? What we've actually done as part of the Department of Health Access Programme from NHS Dentistry is we'd engaged in a social marketing um, campaign which was looking at um, areas where people were coming but more importantly going out and finding what were the roadblocks, the barriers to actually prevent people accessing NHS Dentistry. Okay. Um, a lot of it came down to the fact of awareness, cost, the, the normal things that were, were actually preventing people coming through. So as part of that we invited all of our NHS dentists to actually sign up to what we call classed our Broader Beams Wider Smiles campaign. Um, what the PCT did on the back of that was we provided all the marketing literature, um, we did a lot of awareness, um, a lot of events such as Freshers Fair and we just asked practices to engage in that, sign up to it and actually accept patients irrespective of time of actual um, being away from NHS dentistry or a dentist um, irrespective of financial barriers and just actually open up the access. Okay. One of the things that came out of the social marketing um, aspect was a company called Dr Foster did a mystery shop for us yep. and they actually went out and posed as five different types of patients, adults, child, looking for appointments, um, it sent elderly and all of the others. What came out of that was, um, in one particular incident, a receptionist put the phone down on the uh, market researcher before she'd actually asked all of the questions. Yeah. And you suddenly got alarm bells. Yes, we're going out, we're spending a lot of money on marketing to encourage patients, but if it all fell down at the first, first point of entry, it was a complete and utter waste of time. So we wanted to instill the customer experience um, hence the customer training, hence the phone call. Okay, so what's interesting about that is that here is a uh, primary care trust who are commissioning an outside firm of management consultants yeah. to come in and do the mystery shopping. And what they're finding is that the PCT has been investing in marketing support services uh, for the practices. But all of that marketing support, and, and those of you that follow my stuff will know that we were talking about this in the context of marketing the other week. All that marketing support is leading to a moment of truth where somebody either picks up a phone and rings a dental practice or they walk through the door and that first contact, that uh, first impression has not been a good one Absolutely. and so they were then yeah. drifting away and thinking to hell with it, I won't bother. Yeah. So uh, I got the call a year ago and uh, Carol and I spent some time around about 12 months ago formulating a program. Um, in the late part of 2009, we called together the 36 dental principals. We had an evening meeting with them and we said, we're proposing to do some customer service training for your teams. Would you support us on that? What we ended up doing with their help was to split all the practices into three groups so that we could facilitate the training without closing the practice down because obviously UDA targets had to be met. 
So we ended up doing two training days with a three month gap between them. The first training day was delivered three times and the second training day has been delivered three times. In fact, we're halfway through the final day today. So these practices have been on a three to four month patient journey training program. They've had two training days. They've also had email and telephone coaching in between times as well. And uh, we're now getting to the end of the process. Now, I can share with you that the feedback that we've had from some of the member practices has been absolutely excellent. And in fact, over the weeks ahead, I'll be sharing some of that feedback with you in terms of what has happened at the grassroots. But Carol, I'm interested from your point of view, the PCT have funded this, mm -hmm. they're going to want to see results. Yeah. Um, as a, a representative of the PCT, how has it been for you? What's been the experience that you've had? Um, first, first word that comes to mind is enlightening. Um, from a PCT point of view, it's been good to actually meet and greet every single member of the practice team on an informal basis, because um, I think a lot of the time when we do practice visits, it's a bit oh, us and them, yep. um, but we're actually on a one-to-one -one basis because I'm learning at the same time as all the practices are actually learning. Um, I can actually see brand standards starting to come through um, to the point where we, we had to contact a number of uh, practices actually after day one of the customer service training that could have been a potential hiatus hernia in the whole experience to be told by the, the principals, okay, that's fine, not a problem, leave it with me, I'll get it sorted, which I don't think would have happened yep. prior to that. Um, from our point of view as well, money is actually being quite restricted within um, the, the PCT. What I'm looking at this is the customer service training we're providing is a low cost marketing tool. Um, we've done quite a lot, spent a lot of money on the marketing, but that can actually be a one hit wonder yep. to actually get that that experience going through and our perception is our NHS patients are getting the same level of care, customer service as any private patient would do and without any detriment to anything at all. Okay, so uh, what I'm hearing you say is that the PCT have established better lines of communication with the practices. Yeah. And that also you have actually seen an improvement in brand standards. Yeah. And therefore, if we go back to the original reason for the training, which was this weak link in the, in the patient journey, we feel that this process has managed to solve that problem and it's given people a very clear set of uh, guidelines as to how to deliver a better customer service Absolutely. experience. Okay, now we're a week before a spending review. Uh, so nobody quite knows what's happening, but um, if you could wave a realistic magic wand, what would you want to do next with these people? Because they're all going to drift away from here today and that's the end of the Chris Barrow experience mm -hmm. for now. Yeah. Uh, if you could actually uh, make your own wish come true, what would you like to see next? Well, I feel that we've just started to get that wheel turning and the momentum going in practices. Um, we've got one practice who's 30% actually through issuing and making their own brand standard menu which to me is like wow that yeah. that is so good that that's actually happening in Coventry and I know full well that that's just been shared in the workshop we've just been in that's not going to be in one practice now that will be in the majority yeah. of our practices out there is to keep that wheel turning and let's actually look at fine-tuning what's actually what's actually going on in the practices now Got it. Thank you, Carol. Uh, as always, I hope you've enjoyed that conversation. Um, I also hope that other PCTs around the country can perhaps listen into this uh, and see that what we've got here is a PCT who are taking a very, very proactive role in uh, training and development of their member practices. And it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you on that programme. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. And thank you for listening.